Hey, what's up, J-Bays? It's me. Happy Friday. If you are new here, welcome me, welcome you. Make sure you click that red subscriber button so it turns from red to gray and that makes you a J-Bay. J-Bays are the best bays in YouTube because they're my bays who tune in whenever I upload to chit chat and all that about luxury beauty. Today is not exactly one of those days. We are actually doing a Q&A for my J-Bays. All my new J-Bays, as a matter of fact. So let's get into it. I asked my J-Bays on my community page to you know, sound off and ask me anything you want to ask and I will be prepared to answer it. So this video is all about whatever you want to know about me. You may be wondering what I am wearing on my face today. It will all be in the description box. It is Shantikai heavy because we saw that your girl got some PR and the second box came today. So I'm wearing quite a few things and loving it, <laughs> loving it quite a bit. So uh, without any further ado, let's get into the Q&A. So I saw a couple of people ask what I do outside of YouTube. I am a full-time claims rep for an insurance company. And um, right now I'm working from home because of the situation in our world. And um, yeah, I've been working there for about, you know, ever since Nala was born. I've been working there for about two years, uh, going on three. So yeah, that's what I do for a living. I work in insurance. And um, I think more important may be what my husband does for a living. And he works as an RTA at a mental hospital. So between the two of us, um, you know, we, we earn a nice little income, you know, like an average income, I would say. The next question I think ties into that, which is what is your beauty budget? Um, I really have to look at it on a month to month basis. Right now, for example, we're moving, so money is considerably tighter because we're preparing for all the things that come with a move. And so, you know, um, I'm not able to spend as much as I would have been able to spend maybe this time last year. And so I give myself, you know, I look at what's coming out and what I absolutely cannot live without, what I'm able to pay over time versus what I need to pay up front, things like that. I really try to just manage it. But I would say, just to give a rough estimate, that my budget is probably $400 a month. I think that would be an average. Yeah, I mean, there are, like I said, there are some months, honey where that goes up <laughs> but uh, for the most part that's a that's like a pretty good median budget for me i thought this was a really really good question um how much do i do my makeup since i'm in quarantine i like to do my makeup as often as i have time to so that can be three to four times a week i just like doing it um i like to take pictures I like to um, take my daughter out and sometimes I want to look presentable. So <laughs> yeah, I will um, do my makeup like pretty often throughout the week, more than half the week. Um, when did I start getting into makeup and what sparked my interest? I got into makeup a long time ago. I feel like I got into makeup when I was in high school. Um, my family has sold like Mary Kay and Avon. So that was like my first foray into makeup and drugstore was also, um, you know, cause I was making a very modest income as a teenager. And so I did not spend a lot of money on makeup. I would say I got into luxury makeup in my twenties. Um, about 25 was when I started to, um, get into makeup. That was also probably around the time I started to get into my natural hair as well. And um, they really did tie into each other in terms of me, you know, sort of enhancing my natural beauty and feeling confident and, you know, wanting to be girly, you know, and, and, and very, um, very creative in that regard. So um, that was around the time when I got into it. And then... Um, I had always worn makeup. Like I said, I was, I liked makeup in high school and stuff, but I got really into it, like into the beauty world on YouTube in my late twenties. What started my love of luxury makeup? Hmm. The Mac counter at Nordstrom. 
started my love for uh, luxury makeup. And then very shortly after that, my first foray into Sephora, I purchased my first foundation, which was Makeup Forever Face and Body in shade 10. I will never forget it. <laughs> um, I stepped into the store and it just felt like, I felt like this instant heart entanglement. <laughs> And I was like, wow, I like it in here. This is cute. I can get used to this. And when I when I finally applied the face and body and I saw how well it covered up my hyperpigmentation, because I mean, it was way worse than it is today. I mean, when I tell you my cheeks were black, like it was bad. And so um, a really full coverage foundation was something that I was after. I wanted to see, you know, what do, what do I really look like without all this freaking crap on my face? Um, and that, Actually getting into makeup helped me get into skincare because I wanted my skin's texture to be smooth and nice so that my makeup would look even nicer. And so, you know, there were a lot of people around me older than myself that were saying that, um, you know, putting all that stuff on your face is gonna break you out and blah, blah, blah. But it was actually the exact opposite. And putting makeup on and having to take it all off in order to keep my face clean and then doing a skincare routine afterwards actually made my face look better and as you can see like nowadays there is some discoloration but it is nowhere near where it was and I really have struggled in my adult life because I actually had pretty clear skin as a teenager um I've struggled in my adult life with you know acne and acne scarring and hyperpigmentation and all this um all this stuff and so um, makeup actually helps me see myself in a way like that's that's what drives my passion for it is that I can actually see what I really look like you know like with an even complexion that matches my chest and then I get to like kind of play up my cheekbones and you know um, play with color and um, enhance enhance these beautiful little lips right here you know stuff like that and so it really uh, made me feel um to it made me look on the outside the way that I feel on the inside about myself and so um luxury beauty I felt gave me more options I mean I would say mid-range not necessarily luxury but like mid-range beauty really gave me more options of how to achieve that look in terms of like formulation of foundations because you know you can't really try stuff on in the drugstore and it was like hit and miss and then you don't really want to return it and all this stuff but i found the return policy at sephora to be way more generous at the time and so i was able to feel confident about getting samples and experimenting and i felt like it was worth the money for me to have that freedom and and all of these really great options that i just wanted to explore i just wanted to see what was out there and i had the means to do so at the time i was working um as a creative um full time at the at you know in my late 20s and i was able to afford to purchase whatever i wanted i think i spent the same thing that i spend now uh, acquiring it and it wasn't even about doing YouTube for me at the time it was just about um, just it was just about learning about these products and learning what I what worked for me and what I liked and just experimenting and being creative and and feeling in control of the way that I looked I think the next question really kind of segues really uh, well into uh, what I was talking about previously. And that is, what do I think about luxury brands that have limited shade ranges? I think they're missing out on coin. That's what I think. I think they're missing out on coin. I used to get more upset about it um, until I really talked about it with friends, until I you know, was reading about it uh, people's opinions on it and everything and then I just realized to myself you know what buying power of black women is major I mean when you look at beauty industry hair skin um, makeup you know trillion dollars I believe 
And if you don't want a piece of that, that's your business, honey. Like, that's honestly how I feel about it. Um, it's too bad that I can't try, you know, whatever it is that they don't have my skin tone in or whatever. But I mean, that's their loss. I really, that's how I feel about it. There are so many brands out there for me to try and that will cater to me specifically that I no longer get frustrated about it. But I did at one time. There was a time where I felt like it was, you know, wrong of them to do that. But I don't know that I necessarily feel that way now. And I feel like there's been at least five years in between the time I felt that way and the, the, the way that I feel now. And I've just come to the conclusion that I will spend my money where I'm wanted. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to beg people or, or, you know, bring to their attention something that I feel like should be obvious. I hope that makes sense. Like it, they go by, I guess, who's buying from them and that's who they cater to. But why not expand your market? Don't you, isn't the whole thing, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't own a multi-million dollar business. I don't own a brand, but I also feel like, you know, if I did own a brand, I would do it like Rihanna did. it. That's just me. Oh gosh, what is my favorite luxury brand? Oh my gosh, I can't do this. Hold on. I'm, I'm looking around and thinking. I would say... I'm going to wait until my mama finish vacuuming and then I'm going to tell you. I'm sitting here and looking at my collection. I would say that my favorite brand is Pat McGrath. As I look around, that's probably the brand that I could do a full face effortlessly. Um, and I don't consider Fenty Beauty necessarily luxury. So that's the only reason I'm not saying them. I consider them mid-range or high-end. What are your top three favorite luxury beauty pieces? Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Ah, let's see. Okay, Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. That's one. That's the one. <laughs> That's number one. Pat McGrath Permagel Liners. And I'm going to count the eye and lip liners together because I use them interchangeably. I am truly sitting here drawing a blank. Okay. Oh. Gucci lipstick. Like, I, I can't get past that. So that's going to be my, my three luxury beauty pieces. Yes. Wow. Looking around this space. I have so many lip products, but I have to say that the ones that I reach for the most lately are Gucci. Love Gucci lipstick. Need more. Need a whole lot more. Okay. Here's a question that I'm a little nervous about answering um <laughs> if i were in a bind and had to buy a drugstore what brand would i would i buy um i would buy covergirl if the queen collection were available if it were not available i would buy iman um, this is a really interesting question um i was asked what are some other passions I have outside of YouTube or that I haven't talked about on YouTube? Writing. I've done beauty blogging for a couple of websites. Um, been published in a magazine. And I do want to write my own uh, novel series one day. So that's yeah, I've, I've always been really, I've really excelled in like English literature, English, you know, grammar and all of that, even though I choose to speak how I speak. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I was, I, I love to write. So I, I'd really love to dig deeper into that um, in the near future. One of you asked about my favorite makeup brands and favorite makeup products. I think um, 
I'll give you a top five of my favorite makeup brands. I think that's fair. Um, Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, Tom Ford, um, Fenty Beauty, and one more, NARS. Yeah, I think that's really good. You know, out of those, you can definitely find everything that you need for a full face. Um, I didn't mention Hourglass because I feel like I have more of the other products than I do. Like I have more products from the brands that I mentioned to you than I do Hourglass, even though Hourglass would be like an honorable mention because I cannot live without my Veil Mineral Primer. Baby, it is litty for really. <laughs> like I truly, I'm on my third full size bottle. So there you go. But let's see, let's answer that question in full, shall we? So from Fenty Beauty, my favorite products are the um, fly liner pencils, the color ones. I love their concealer. I love their powders. Love the powders. Um, and the hydrating foundation is bae. That's a good, that's a good foundation. That's a good foundation no matter what your skin type. It is really, really good. They, I didn't even think that they could do better than the, than the matte, but they did. That hydrating is sickening. From Pat McGrath, I would recommend, of course, her eyeshadows. I feel like that goes without saying. I definitely would recommend her Permagel eye pencils and lip pencils. Just get all of them, just like I did. Do it. Selfridge just has them for like 17 bucks right now. I would also, of course, recommend her concealer. It's beautiful. It's a really beautiful formula. The under eye blurring powder is beautiful. The medium stays sold out because it suits so many skin tones. Um, yeah, those are the things that are like number, like at the very top for me, as far as her products that I think are absolutely beautiful and that everybody can use, you know, like everybody can find use for. Her lip glosses are incredible, you know, like, Honestly, Pat don't make bad product. So, you know, the, the the sifter on the powders, like the loose powders could be better, but I like the powder. Like the actual product is good. <laughs> the packaging isn't great, but the product's good. Same way about uh, the blurring powder. Packaging's not great, product is awesome. And from Natasha Denona, definitely the I Need a Nude lipsticks, best satin formula that I've tried. Like, I love YSL lipsticks. I feel like they're very similar. Very, very similar in terms of quality. From NARS, I've really got to give it up for that Natural Radiant Foundation. My God, I cannot stand myself for waiting as long as I did to try that out. The liquid blushes, please try one. If you're gonna try one, try out of the two that, you know, cause they have, Lagu uh, not Laguna, I'm sorry, they have Orgasm, but that, that doesn't work for me. I have the other two. I have Torrid and I have, um, what is it called? Dolce Vita. Dolce Vita and Torrid. Out of the two, I would say Dolce Vita is going to, across the board, work for more people. So I would definitely suggest get, trying that one out first. Don't be intimidated. Use literally a drop, like that little pump should take care of both your cheeks. And um, it does require like to shake it up as you, you know, if you've let it sit for a little while, but it still performs the exact same way. So I think it's an amazing product. And of course, I would be remiss as a mofo if I didn't tell you to get yourself some NARS blushes. Aroused, Savage, and Coeur Baton. Top three. There you go, you welcome girl. Makeup memories, what are some of my best makeup memories. Um, the first time Hitomi did my makeup at the Providence Sephora, she used, she used a, a technique on my eyes using a brush that I had never used before. And that made me fall in love with Sephora Pro brushes even deeper. And just developing that relationship with her um, to where when we see each other and you know, she saw me, she knew me before I had my daughter um, and we like embrace each other, except we can't do that right now because of COVID. <laughs> but um, you know, like 
her and Rochelle became like friends, like people I talked to outside of the Sephora walls. And she showed me techniques for how to apply my, um, my concealer. She, she helped me learn about the complexity of my complexion. And that really kind of made me dive deep into like undertones and, and um, how to fix the, like if a foundation is a little off, how to fix it with powders and the undertones of your powder and how that can help your, like just stuff like that um, is really where my makeup memories lie. Not necessarily in a specific product, but in my experience in going to these, frequenting these places where I get my makeup, if that makes sense. Remember, I remember seeking out um, some shades from YSL, for example, and going to the Sephora in, Prov um, not Providence, I'm sorry, Prudential Center in Boston. And one of my favorite memories from there is this lovely girl named Erica, makeup artist there who did my makeup. And it was during the YSL event where um, I was purchasing a lipstick to have engraved for the first time. They were introducing this engraving service and um, I went there for my birthday makeup, but I also went there to have a personalized YSL lipstick. The moment I stepped into the Sephora, it was super busy that day. And um, they were telling me, oh yeah, Erica's on her, like she'll be here in just a few minutes. And while I was browsing and everything, everybody was so incredibly helpful. But the minute I saw her, I knew that I was going to have a bomb experience. Just so personable, so kind. And when she did my makeup, one of the things that we really bonded over was colorful eyeshadow. And she did my makeup with the Nocturnal Nirvana Quad. Man, that is probably one of my favorite memories. It just didn't even feel like an hour had gone by because we instantly bonded and she was just incredibly kind and made me feel at home. And I just love those kinds of experiences because I have them so often. It's like, now I have like three <laughs> of my favorite um, makeup artists from the walls of Sephora and I've also had experiences where I have been extremely helpful to somebody who felt a bit lost in Sephora because sometimes people are afraid to ask and I just, I, I seek them out and then I try to sort of pay it forward and um, help them find things for themselves. And I've also made a couple of um, private clients from that. And yeah, just stuff like that is really where my memories lie. And I would have to say if it was a product that was tied to a memory, it would be the Pat McGrath quad in Nocturnal Nirvana. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily a question, but I want to thank, um, I believe it's Shauna, Shauna Deal for the um, idea of creating a video using my number one product from all of the luxury brands that I own. Um, I think that's really cool and, and I'm going to take my time and put together that video for you guys. So I won't mention here what they are because I honestly don't know. <laughs> I don't know for like all of them. So I will take my time to come up with a video for you. And I want to thank you Shauna for that, uh, for that suggestion. Another question from Shauna was, um, what is my favorite lipstick to wear? And I think we can safely say it's Gucci, <laughs> Gucci matte lipstick right now. Um, that changes all the time, but right now it is the Gucci matte lipstick formula. It's my favorite. All right, so another question is about brushes and specifically um, why haven't I taken the, um, how, why haven't I dipped a toe into natural brushes basically? Well, I am afraid. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm afraid of ruining really expensive brushes. Um, which is why I tend to stick with synthetic because I know I can be really rough and you know just kind of do whatever and wash them more frequently that's the other thing because I have you know very sensitive skin I break out a lot um, so I need to wash my brushes like often and you're not supposed to wash natural brushes often so like that's another reason I'm a little nervous about doing it um, I will I will because I, you know, obviously the hype is real. People love it. Um, and I want to experience that, but I think 
I want to get my skin under control a little more before I start using you know tools that I can't wash very often so that's that's another reason because as I look at the prices some of them are expensive but some of them are kind of on par with what I spend on a synthetic brush and in that instance I think that I'm willing to make the purchase of um, natural brushes that are on par price wise with my synthetic ones because then maybe I won't feel you know away if I <laughs> mess them up so yeah um, I definitely will get into them I just don't know when and yeah so that's that's my answer to that question um Linda asks what state I live in I live in Massachusetts I'm a New England girl I was born in Boston um and I still live in Massachusetts <laughs> so um yeah yeah I live up north northeast <laughs> someone asked about Nala and um you know does she does she like makeup yes she likes whatever mommy likes honestly um so when she sees me doing makeup she wants to be involved as well like um when I received my second Shantakai PR package, I was swatching the eyeshadows that came in that package. And she she wanted, <laughs> I thought she wanted to wear the eyeshadow. She wanted the swatches. <laughs> she was like, put it right here. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. So I gave her some swatches and she likes to, you know, cause she sees me talking in front of the camera. So she wants to go, you know, this is such and such and blah, blah, blah. And, um, her favorite color, um, I don't I don't think Nala has a favorite color. My favorite color on her is pink, just because it just looks really pretty against her skin tone. Pink and white look incredible. Um, but she also looks gorgeous in like lavender and um, she loves stuffed animals. Like she likes soft things. So soft blankets, soft pillows, stuffed animals that are really soft, like the, what do you call them? I don't know if they're called like Pusheen or something like that, like the little bunnies or, and creatures with the really tiny faces. And then they have like a little round, like a little round belly and short hands. Like I think they're called Pusheens. Um, she loves those. And um, she also is really uh, a lover of trucks. Like she loves trucks and cars. Um, let me see, what else? Uh, so she doesn't have a favorite color. She just, you know, she goes with the flow usually, but she likes colorful things. So like unicorns and mermaids and all of that, like really iridescent and sparkly, you know, typical, typical kid. <laughs> she really loves PJ Mask, Ship and Potato, True in the Rainbow Kingdom. So any toys related to that, any toys related to that, she's down for. Right now she has... Um, the little PJ masks and their little mobiles, like, uh, all three of them have their own little cars and, um, she loves to drive those around the, the house and on my lovely white desk. <laughs> what product is not worth purchasing and why? Let me see. I'm gonna look around at things that I maybe don't reach for as often and you know out of all my lip glosses i don't really reach for my mar jacobs ones very often i feel like they don't like the 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 applicator doesn't give me enough when i go to put it on i find i have to dip in more often like three or four times before i feel like i really have the coverage that i want it's not that they're not pretty it's not that it's not a comfortable product it's just that that element of it is a little annoying and when I'm paying 30 some dollars for a lip gloss that's not worth it to me which is why I ended up purchasing them when they were discounted so I got them for like 17 or 1650 instead of the full price so for me they're not worth their full price and um, another thing that I think is not really worth the price <laughs> The Tom Ford liquid, uh, not liquid, I'm sorry. The Tom Ford highlighter blush stick is really greasy. <laughs> like, <laughs> y'all want too much money for that shit. Like, that, that's just not it. Um, not for me, not for a girl who is not dry. If you are dry, it's actually probably really great for you. But for myself, it doesn't work. Um, 
I try to powder over it or I try to put a powder product on top of it because I was thinking I like these colors I love this highlight I love this blush color but the formula is too greasy for me like it's very shiny and it's very hard to like you know get it set down and yeah it doesn't work for me it's a no for me dog and I think I answered this one already but it was the what is your very first luxury product that you purchased and that would have been no, I didn't answer that because I don't think that Makeup Forever is luxury. It's high end. So the first luxury product that I ever purchased was a YSL lip stain. It was it was a purple YSL lip stain. And I don't have it anymore. Um, and I don't know that they even make it anymore. But it was a... Uh, it was a lip stain and it was very pigmented. It was purple, it was gorgeous, and I actually used it up. <laughs> that was the first time that I, and it, and it looked, let me, let me grab these, it looked kind of like this. It looked kind of like this, but it wasn't the water stain. It was the stain that actually like provides quite a bit of pigmentation. I loved it and I wanted more colors. Um, I still do. I think it's it's a really beautiful product and um, now that I have you know been reminded of it I'm probably gonna pick it up again so <laughs> look out for it in an upcoming haul because those were really nice and it it provided like shine but then once the shine disappeared you still had the stain and it just mm, it was nice it smelled good it felt good you could lay like you could build it up to full opacity if you wanted to or you could just have like a little wash of color so yeah that was my first luxury product it was from YSL all right y'all I think I have gone through this entire list I hope that you enjoyed this Q&A and if you did you know what to do you know just go ahead and give your girl a thumbs up I appreciate you in advance and this has been really fun I hope that you enjoyed it I hope you enjoy your weekend and I'm going to see y'all on Tuesday for another video in the meantime in between time please take care of yourself stay safe out there don't forget to hit that like button on the way out wear your mask wash your hands be kind to each other <laughs> and don't forget to click those affiliate links to support your girl's channel anything that i mentioned product wise i'll just list in the description box for you if you're interested in purchasing it um, anything that I forget to mention, go ahead and comment in the comment section and let me know. If you have any other questions for me that I can answer for you, also leave those comments in the comment section. And I will see you next time. Bye.